Give me a second to find this video and to pull it up. We kind of have a lot going on as we're getting ready to kind of shift through um, this 12-12 porthole. So I'm going to do a little bit of an energy forecast on this week as well. And I'm going to be doing um, chakra cards. So give me a second to find this video and get set up. If you're just finding me, um, go ahead and drop a comment if you're going to want a card. Make sure you share this out too. I was kind of having some problems with the loading on my phone. So for sure, make sure you guys share this out too. I always need you guys to. So take a second, share this out. I'm going to go ahead and do an energy forecast. Like I said, we just have a lot happening and this, um, this 12-12 pour hole is going to really just kick things off energetically where we're just going to go through this kind of series of events starting with this porthole. Um, on Thursday, we have the 12-12 porthole. This is an actual porthole. This entire planet will go through. So we've had a lot of kind of releasing and clearing leading up to this too. We also have Chiron, which is going to pull out of or shift out of retrograde on Thursday as well. That's been kind of digging up some old wounds, especially since we're going through this spiritual awakening and we're becoming really consciously aware of hopefully the things that we need to release and heal. We're letting go of a lot of heavy stuff right now with this shift. We have a lot of heart chakra expansion as well. We actually have a beautiful conjunction between Venus, Pluto, and Saturn. We have kind of a theme as well as we're getting ready for Saturn and Pluto to collide in January. And this theme is releasing karma, letting go, healing, right? So while a lot of people can look at that like, you know, karma is being served, it's also being released as well. That's kind of the journey of the soul and what we're all going through. This is a powerful week for manifesting as well. We have a lot of galactic energy as well as ascension energies kind of pouring into the planet right now to kind of push us through this poor hole. We also have a full moon in Gemini, which is all about the mind. And we know that we're kind of manifesting the new and creating with our mind too as well. So take care with your thoughts as you're going through this poor hole. We have a huge emphasis on relationships as well. We also are going to see a lot of space rocks this week as well as probably fireballs kind of kicking this off as well. We're going to go right into this um, December solstice, this winter solstice energy next week as well. So um, Thursday we're doing an event from the Dal Tor, which is a 4,000 year old rock circle. It is a fairy realm as well. And then next Saturday I will be doing a video from Stonehenge, which is some of, it's one of my favorite experiences to go uh, bring videos to you guys from these sacred sites. So we kind of have a lot kicking off all at once. A lot of you guys know that we also have an eclipse the day after Christmas. So this kind of energetic series of events is about to kind of start to kick off Thursday, bringing us into 2020. We're wrapping up a decade, but more importantly, we're wrapping up a two-year ascension cycle where we have been doing nonstop purging, clearing, releasing, and healing. So things are going to feel a lot lighter the second we step into 2020. 20. And these energies are going to really help us shift into the timelines that we're meant to be on. We have a huge focus on manifesting and creating the new right now as we're kind of going through these energetic shifts this month. We've done a lot of spiritual growth this year and we're kind of stepping into new frequencies where our body is suddenly able to handle more and more of these energies. So we're being sent more and more of these energies as well. So things are going to continue to get kind of intense around here energetically. These are good things. I have a lot of people that are kind of seeing a lot happen in one place. Just kind of trust the process and that we're all kind of going through this divine plan and it is going to bring us where we need to be. All right, my link is above. I'll go ahead and afterwards post um, the link. I had to get on here today. I'm kind of busy this week, but I had to get on here so I could tell you guys, because I don't promote my stuff enough, that I am doing this event on Thursday, 12-12, for the porthole, which is really powerful work, because we'll be out on the ley lines and channeling out activations through the videos I'm doing. I'm not doing it on this page, so you actually have to sign up through my site 
There is an event on this page, um, so you just sign up and you get a link to join the space I'm doing it in. I am doing it on Facebook, so it's really easy for you to access it. If you can't catch me that time, it is okay. It's still the same on replay. Um, I would for sure check that out. Make sure you guys sign up for it. You guys can just message me or check that event out. My link is above too. I will be here the rest of the week for readings and spiritual healings. I'm also manifesting students. I teach a lot of energy healing classes as well. I see a lot of viewers for sure share this out too. I'm trying to create a good energy so we can kind of shift into a better place right before this porthole. So this is really um, kind of a powerful broadcast today too. No pressure, right? No pressure. I'm just getting ready. I'm like looking at my calendar. I'm just getting ready to go, you know, to all of these crazy places in the next two weeks. So I like to try to bring you guys along for the ride and bring you guys with me. So I have a lot of powerful energy moving in my own life over here, and I know you guys too. So we're starting to get a big influx of energy right now. Cassie Shank, you're working on your sacral chakra, desires, goals, passion, cravings, and fulfillment. I just filmed um, an episode for Awoken TV right now, and I was just talking about manifesting. And one of the things that makes us really powerful with manifesting is it's just staying happy, right? You ever have one of those bad days and it's like you're stuck in traffic, everything just starts to go wrong? Well, the reverse is true too. If we can just stay happy and excited, all of our manifestations will kind of magnetize to us faster. You're a generator. Work on your energy. If you can stay happy, you're extra contagious and that goes for your manifestations too. So you are a manifester. Make sure that you're staying and finding your bliss. Krista Sainberry, you're working on your throat chakra. That is not easy because I'm on this throat chakra quest too. And it's really easy for us to suddenly just stay quiet, right? Just stay quiet, keep our thoughts to ourselves and things like that. But we have to unlock this gateway. Our throat chakra is the gateway to the fifth dimension. Find your voice, speak your truth. It's how your soul tribe will find you. Expression, assertiveness, self-control, and direction. Um, you know, I found that through learning how to speak on these videos, it's really helped unlock me with my manifesting too. Um, so no wonder they want us all to be quiet around here. It really cuts us off from our creative potential. So for sure, find your voice. It'll be powerful for the things that you're trying to speak into existence. I'm learning to be more careful with my words because everything that I talk about is manifesting right into my reality and we're instant manifesting. A lot of you guys are realizing that. We are literally instant manifesting now with these new energies. So we need to be more careful um, with our words, especially in our thoughts. Speak about things you want to see happen, right? I, I'm, I realize our words are basically weaving magic, weaving spells. So definitely talk about things you want to see happen. Let's see, Brenda Schaefer. You're working on your heart chakra. Me too. <laughs> Love, kindness, benevolence, sharing, and receiving. We have a lot of, especially the feminine, heavy stuff that we're kind of healing and dealing with. Um, just kind of because we're more tuned into the collective, I feel like. Keep working on your heart chakra, definitely. Love is literally the most powerful force in the universe. It will move mountains. Sometimes we're seeing that with some of these spiritual unions that are coming into play or coming into fruition, where literally it's like heaven and earth have to move to bring certain souls together. So love is such a powerful force. It is all that the universe is interested in as well. While we're going through this ascension, we're noticing that anything not of love tends to fade away or fall away too. So us staying in love is very powerful for our healing. More self-love, more heart chakra work. Mary D. Santiago, good morning. You're working on your base chakra, physical health, vitality, strength, body image, and balance. Um, keep working on how you're seeing things, seeing yourself, more energetic balance. Um, I, work, I tend to work a lot, right? I tend to work a lot. When I get out of balance, I can always tell um, because, you know, I'm just not as magnetic. Things aren't working as good. It's really important that we're staying balanced. And everyone's different. That's why I love spirituality. A lot of you guys might or might not know that I also do spiritual groups here on Facebook. If you're looking on, you know, vibing with more of your soul tribe, you know, just kind of getting more into this stuff, I have a whole group section on here. And one of the amazing thing is, is I'm always trying to bring together the awakened. And that includes all different religions, beliefs, right? Things that we're into, different forms of spirituality. And that's so beautiful to me. You're unique in the things that you're into. Make sure that you're kind of taking time to recharge your 
yourself and everyone's different in the things that kind of restore our energy as well. Do more of what you enjoy, right? More time taking care of yourself. It will really help you with your energy. Rachel May Farr. You're working on your solar plexus, personal boundaries, choice, assertiveness, empowerment, and authenticity. Watch out for any type of kind of victim programming. That's the type of programming that we kind of all got and that we have to transcend as well. Make sure you're setting personal boundaries with people. No more people pleasing, right? We're realizing that people pleasing or kind of doing things to make other people happy isn't very good for ourselves and that we should be listening to our intuition. So pay attention to the things that you're feeling. Honor your um, intuition. We're going to become more and more psychic, more and more tuned in. People are accessing the most amazing abilities that they're using to hopefully serve the collective or to kind of make a difference in the world or in their own lives and things like that. So we're going to really um, just basically tap into more and more of our psychic potential as these energies are continuing to stream in. Pay attention to your intuition. Latoya Jordan. You're working on your third eye, seeing perspective, truth, knowledge, and clarity. <clears throat> Keep working on that chakra. A lot of you guys are drawn to me because I have a very overactive third eye. I have a really overactive third eye and crown chakra. So for me, I need to really stay grounded, right? I need to get outside. I need to connect with the earth. If any of you guys are feeling like you're in your head too much or anxiety, which I always kind of think of as like fear, right? any kind of negativity, try to get outside more. We're in our head a lot. And this stems from past lives in places like Atlantis. We need to really find our, you know, balance back, want it, uh, balance back in harmony with earth. So if you're in your head a lot, try to get outside. I was so grounded and zenned out when I was living in California, but I was walking around barefoot all day long and I was like outside and I was so like calm and grounded and I'm really seeking to get back to that place energetically. So for sure, get more air. I know it's kind of like cold out in half the world, um, you know, if it's freezing where you live, still make sure that you're saging, getting some fresh air, connecting with the earth that will help you guys get through these energy shifts. Cindy Gordon Carpenter, you're working on your sacral, emotions, feelings, expression, moods, and balance. I was just explaining how we've been taught that emotions are bad. It doesn't matter if it's you know, states of happiness or anger, you can feel there's a lot of energy behind these emotions, right? If you get excited, there's a lot of energy, a positive charge. Maybe you're angry and there's a negative energy. So our emotions are powerful in terms of our manifesting as well. When you add all that energy or emotion to something, it will generally kind of put a charge behind your manifesting. If you want to become kind of better at manifesting, make sure that you're really focused on and aligned on feeling good. We tend to draw things to us that would feel good or make us happy. Jamie Taylor, you're working on your third eye, dreams, messages, signs, symbols, and guidance. Okay, the moon is not great for our sleep. Sometimes with these full moons, a lot of you guys are either awake, not dreaming, not sleeping so great, maybe just waking up tired and things like that. So there is a direct correlation between the lunar cycles and our physical body. I'm someone that is very sensitive to the moon as well and its cycles. And I noticed that a lot of these ascension upgrades and ascension energies kind of cycle with the moon as well. <clears throat> so this week is not great for dreaming or astral traveling, but when we are back to dreaming really good, like, you know, start of next week, make sure that you are paying attention to your dreams. You're being guided. We're realizing that while we might be here in the physical a lot of the time, our soul is traveling. It is able to go to other dimensions, other realms, other places. We get a really good glimpse of our subconscious in these dimensions when we're asleep and we're bringing back kind of fragments of our dreams as well. So we're realizing we're multidimensional. In fact, when we die, death is not the end. It might be the end of our experience here, but we just transition back into a light body form and go to have another experience. Sometimes people go on to guide their loved ones, right? We go on to other incarnations. We do different things. And the thing is, is that 
we can only work on our light bodies while we're here in Earth. That is why our soul would have chosen to come learn here because we can really evolve very fast spiritually here and really work on our light bodies. Keep working on your light body. Things that are amazing for your light body clearly would be kind of activating and upgrading your DNA, eating lighter foods, meditation. Judy Stainberry, you're working on your third eye too, the mind. Openness, flexibility, imagination, and learning. A lot of our abilities will come from the mind. I try explaining this to people and there. Sometimes, there, sometimes people get it, sometimes there's a disconnect, but this is all stuff that we need to practice, right? And the, don't worry, the universe pushes us to practice a lot of the time. <laughs> sometimes we have stressful situations, we get in these weird predicaments, maybe we need to kind of manifest to get our way out of these things. The universe is always pushing us into these abilities. You have a lot of abilities with the third eye, so keep working on your third eye. Danielle Huffsteller. You're working on your crown chakra. Mine is really overactive, but I spend a lot of time in prayer. Things like prayer, meditation, getting outside. You know what's been really good for my crown chakra? Connecting with the ley lines of the earth, kind of during these energy shifts, it's really given me a lot of crown chakra expansion. Get outside, connect with Gaia, spend more time in meditation. I was explaining that people are not meant to be living like this, actually. We're not meant to be living all kind of, you know, goal-oriented around money, stressed out, prison planet, all of these things. We were kind of made for a different kind of existence, one that we're kind of working towards hopefully getting back to. Spend more time alone. Spend more time meditating. Crystal Waldo, you're working on your heart chakra. We're going through a lot of heart chakra expansion. This Chiron retrograde was kind of heavy for me. A lot of you guys might have felt the last Mercury retrograde kind of heavy as well because it's bringing, it brought you some revelations as to where you need to further heal. And this is kind of deep stuff consciousness, right? Um, so this is giving us an opportunity to release these old wounds. Yeah, the things that you guys have never healed, didn't process correctly, um, remember from, you know, a third dimensional victim perspective, these are all things that have clogged up our energy field. And these are even patterns that keep replaying. And so it's really important that we are fully healing and letting go of all of this heavy stuff for this porthole, right? Things are going to get a lot lighter, hopefully, after we go through this 12-12 porthole and Chiron kind of shifts out of retrograde. So time to let go of these old wounds. Time to let go of how we're seeing things. Emma Bagwell, you're working on your solar plexus. You're getting really energy sensitive. It's part of it. Um, we will grow into our abilities more and more, but you know, that's what really um, got me on camera in the first place. I'm clearly becoming really energy sensitive to uh, these, energies, these energies coming in. I'm not the only one as well. So it's really important for me that I'm taking really good care of my energy. I'm huge on salt baths, right? Meditation, recharging, getting outside. All things that really help us energetically going through this ascension. Like I mentioned also, grounding. Um, a lot of people get really ungrounded with all these energies flying around. It's basically like highly charged particles and they're affecting all of us. It doesn't matter at what conscious level of awareness you're at. We're all going through the same experience with this ascension. So it can be really helpful to stay grounded as well. Paul Max, you're working on your heart chakra, compassion, caring, empathy, acceptance, and gentleness, more compassion for ourselves as well. You know, I had to think about it this morning because I've been, I kind of went through a lot this year and I had to think about, you know, how I would, you know, talk to someone else if they had been through the same stuff, you would be like, it's okay, it's fine, right? But how we talk to ourselves, we're way too hard on ourselves. Time to let go of that. More self-care, more compassion, and that includes yourself too. More heart chakra work. Rick Larcom, you're working on your sacral relationships. I laugh. Intimacy, freedom, acceptance, and trust. Yes, we have some work to do with our relationships and coming back to oneness. Um, you know, whenever we're seeing things not in that light, right, they're never good for us. Time to kind of get back to oneness with ourselves and all of our relationships around us. And, you know, I've had a really hard time kind of, we'll say conscious dating, right? Conscious dating. Doing relationships and this awakening at the same time. It can be kind of tricky, but keep working on your sacral. Samantha Joan, 
You're working on your throat chakra. Honesty, truth, transparency, sincerity, and communication. Time to speak your truth. And you know, I always say that you guys have your own universe. I'm just someone that tries to guide people and maybe show you guys that through changing our thoughts and how we see things, we can change our entire reality. Through changing our energy, we can change our entire universe. So this is really, really powerful stuff. Find your truth. We're going to have to speak out, right? We're going to have to speak up. Every person has a piece of this puzzle and it kind of comes together as a whole. That's why there's so many things going on and unfolding all at once. Find your truth. It'll be really powerful for anchoring you into the new dimension, new frequencies of the fifth dimension. Beck Smith, you're working on your sacral, sexuality, openness, sharing, beauty, and honor. And I could go on such a talk with this topic, right? Sexuality. Um, it's a lot of why we can see straight from a lot of these teachings why the feminine has been taken out of things. There's such a power in coming together in love and in divine energies and sharing, you know, sexual energies such as Kudalini. It's very powerful stuff. If you guys are highly charged sexually, that means you're an amazing manifester as well. Kudalini energy is powerful for things like creation, right? We could say bringing souls through, bringing new life through, that force of the creator as well. Keep working on your sacral. Tyler Schollenberger. You're working on your third eye. Guidance, support, love, signs, and direction. And sometimes, you know, the universe is always communicating with us. Sometimes it's not that obvious, right? Sometimes it's in our face and we just don't want to hear it. Sometimes it's not that obvious. Little, you know, maybe number codes, just signs you're on the right path. Having a dream, having a gut feeling, an intuitive pull. We, it's kind of like we get little pieces of the puzzle here and there, right? We kind of had to put it together for ourselves. Maybe you're getting, you know, something that you're hearing and it resonates, but we're gathering information and having a lot come back to us fast. There's magic all around you. Pay attention to the magic, whether it's number codes, you seeing something that triggers something within you, messages like from cards, things like that. These are all signs that there is magic all around you. Roxana Adams. You're working on your base chakra, home, shelter, safety, nurturing, and warmth. Time to let go of fear. That's what my journey's been all about. It only took me going across the planet, right, and going on this kind of crazy soul quest. But a lot of my soul path is life is to conquer a lot of this past life fear that I brought with me and I found that I'm not the only one and that we can kind of get into these areas of consciousness and see we all have a lot in common actually right um, we all are one and we're kind of having a similar experience let go of fear know that you're you know protected and that you're being divinely guided everything that you need will be provided for you we can kind of let go of all the stress and anxiety at some point. Keep working on your base chakra. A lot of us didn't have a good foundation or a great childhood. Welcome to being a starseed, right? Or a light worker in some regard. So, you know, it's kind of ungrounding for us. I found that, like I said, connecting with the earth can be very healing for our root chakra, our base chakra. It's really good for getting rid of things like fear, anxiety. Krista Boston. Oh, I love it. Okay, I have to say this too. I always sound really weird because once in a while, I, I have a really good recollection of the astral and of my dreams because I've been doing a lot of training and work with bringing back these memories. And so sometimes I'll like remember something and it doesn't make sense and I'll, I've gone and found people and been like, I saw you in the astral last night. I don't really remember a lot, but I saw you and they probably think I'm really weird, right? But I am literally connecting with a lot of you guys in the sleep state as well, right? We're kind of coming together, kind of coming back to oneness for whatever purpose. It's a lot like what I do in this dimension I found, whether it's like teaching, learning, right? Trying to help people with whatever. So I am connecting with a lot of you guys. Hopefully you guys are able to remember more and more of these kind of interdimensional encounters that you're having too. Krista, you're working on your crown chakra. Awareness, attention, reality, and connection. So, you know, you are connecting as well with your soul mates, your soul group. Some of you guys might even have, you know, um, souls that you love that you're connecting with in the other realm. A lot of what got me into this, um, this, I guess you could say, this 
process of spiritual enlightenment was I was having um, interdimensional experiences with people that had died coming back to me. And so I begin to realize that, you know, we don't die and that these were actually real encounters that I was having. So we're being, we're quite busy in the sleep state as well. I like to think that that's um, the best place for our loved ones to come reach us as well in the astral. Linda Bonham. Oh, good to see you guys. <laughs> Inner child. You're working on your solar plexus. Playfulness, lightheartedness, innocence, and wonder. And I'm doing, you know, this new project, and I'm get. I was told have fun with this, and I'm like, yeah, okay, right, <laughs> right, right. I think I'm getting less and less fun as I go about this journey. It's really important that we're getting back to that childlike wonder, that state of seeing the world as a child with, would having more fun as well. Make sure that you're taking time to do more things that light you up and that are fun for you too. Barb Howard, you're working on your base chakra, your root chakra, grounding nature, presence, practicability, and stability. Get grounded. We have so much wind coming in right now, this galactic waves of energy, and I'm in kind of a crazy place because we get a lot of that energy here, which is good for me with the work that I do, uh, but it's a lot to handle. So we have a lot of, like I said, energy flying around. Try to stay grounded. Like when I get off of here, I'm going to do some um, cleaning and saging, right? That's the best thing to do as we're getting ready to go through this porthole, kind of get your house in order, get your space in order, get your energy in order, make sure that you're saging, maybe doing some spiritual cleansing. I always do that anytime we have any kind of new moon, full moon, porthole, things like that. So more grounding, more cleansing. Marie Lynn, you're working on your throat chakra, sound, music, silence, rhythm, and vibrations. And you know, a lot of you guys are realizing we're vibrating higher and higher, right? Our energy fields are changing just as the earth's is, so are ours. Um, things like binaural beats, meditation, music, very powerful. A lot of these sacred sites, I can only describe it because I've done so much work with them. Some of them put you in an altered state of consciousness. I like to think of music like that too, right? Some of you guys feel really good when you listen to your favorite songs. It doesn't have to be meditation music. Just music in general has the powerful ability to really uplift us. Um, so the same is true for things like binaural beats, meditation music, your favorite music. It can really help shift your frequency. Camilla Taylor, you're working on your heart chakra, emotional balance, stability, harmony, peace, and fluidity. Keep working on your heart chakra for sure. We just have a lot that we're releasing, but that's what's going to bring everyone to oneness. So if we didn't have such a need to heal together, we probably wouldn't come back to oneness. I know there's a lot of fires and things that are happening with the earth, but I will remind you, just like you're on this journey of healing, so is Gaia as well, and the earth will heal as well. We're going to be the ones to bring that healing here too. Dottie Story. You're working on your sacral. Money, finances, power, generosity, and abundance. Keep working on your sacral, right? We have a lot of reprogramming to do with manifesting, and we have a powerful energy right now that is kind of, you know, just dying for us to create something new in 2020. We just did, and I've been, this, that's how long I've been alive this decade, right, probably. No, I'm just kidding. I spent most of my life during this decade, so we're wrapping up a decade, right? We're wrapping up a decade of a lot of karmic clearing. This was a hard decade for me, so I know it had to have been for everyone. Just a lot of lessons. If you look back at where you were 10 years ago, oh my God, we have evolved so much since then. So I'm ready. I've been waiting for the last two years to enter this new decade so we could be in a space where we can anchor into these fifth dimensional frequencies. And I will remind you guys, we are here to create heaven on earth. I believe that heaven and hell are nothing to do with when we die, but states of consciousness we will experience both here and possibly in the afterlife, right? And so I think that we've all seen that lack, be, you know, all that kind of negative stuff with the third dimensional programs and are very excited on a spiritual and soul level to be creating something new, the fifth dimension, a place of, you know, healing and abundance. See, Kendra Brown, you're working on your base chakra, your root chakra, possessions, belongings, finances, assets, and treasures. 
and we're going to really start to flow this month too, right? I was feeling a little stagnant parts of last month. Me just manifesting. Sometimes I feel like I'm like flowing real good and I'm like hitting a, a brick wall. And so this is something I'm doing all of the time. And this energy is really moving this month, we shall just say, right? The universe is moving and flowing. So this is a good time to stay active. I've had a really busy week this week, but it's a good time to kind of run around, get things done, wrap up projects, flow. Kelly M. Moore, you're working on your crown chakra, divine consciousness, interconnection, expansion, oneness, and light. Keep working on your crown. Jamie Taylor, you're working on your throat chakra, communication, self-expression, exchange, sharing, and connection. Keep on working on finding your voice. I always say a lot of the people that are drawn to me might be really empathic or light workers or star seeds or indigos kind of in these categories. And something that we kind of got programmed was just, just to just not speak our opinion, just kind of be quiet at times. Find your voice is powerful. Beck Jackson. You're working on your base chakra, your root chakra, family, belonging, community, culture, and tribe. Put out vibes for your soul tribe. It's why I've, um, I just kind of knew that like I had this mission and this calling and I was going to build these spiritual groups and these spiritual spaces. And you wouldn't believe how fast these things aligned. Like I said, ways that I could draw my um, soulmates, my soul tribe back to me. I know that. You know, we come here with one consciousness group to do this mission, this experience, and it was really important that I'm finding these souls, which is a lot of you guys. Um, so for sure, put out the vibe for you guys to find your soul tribe. Tracy McMullen, you're working on your heart chakra. Forgiveness, letting go, healing, growth, and compassion. All that forgiveness is always with ourselves, right? We generally let go of stuff. More forgiveness, right? More releasing of karma, more healing. A lot of the times that's with us. How are you being too hard on yourself, right? I am very aware how we push ourselves and are too hard on ourselves. Um, so more letting go with yourself too. Joy Jackson, love it. You're working on your base chakra, your root chakra, action, movement, perseverance, discipline, and motivation. This takes some discipline. A lot of people won't actually do this stuff. There is a difference between listening to my Facebook feed and going out and doing this stuff that I tell you guys to go do, right? And there's this disconnect. A lot of people want to carry the message, but they don't want to go ahead and put this stuff into action. It takes discipline, right? We're going to have to change the things we're eating. We're going to have to probably take some herbs, some vitamins, do some healing, dig within, practice manifesting, right? Open our third eye, get into this stuff. And so, you know, there is this disconnect, but you're really doing that work. So you're seeing that if you can stay disciplined, that you'll see amazing things happen and change in your reality. Bridget Munshower, you're working on your solar plexus. Choice, free will, courage, willpower, and change. We have to want to change after a minute. I think that the universe is um, just so vast and insane, but with my own journey, you guys have seen this stuff works because you guys get to watch my journey on video from day one, and you can see how it has kind of changed my life and my reality and how, yes, we really can manifest anything that we want because I was someone who formerly felt very limited in my role I'm kind of playing here. So you guys get to see this stuff actually works. It's meant to inspire and motivate you guys to go practice manifesting, try these things, dream bigger, um, because everything that we're daydreaming about, we can attract to us easily. We're instant manifesting, like I said, with these energies. Um, I do have concern about all of this too, though, where people don't realize that it doesn't matter if you're awake or not, that we are manifesting our reality, whether we're aware of it or not. So when I was asleep, I was seeing a lot of negative experiences and drawing a lot of, you know, low vibrational kind of experiences to me or even exploring some of my fears and things that I didn't want because of my programming. So through us, you know, having this chance to awaken further, we can learn how to master these abilities simply through, you know, becoming more disciplined with the things that we're thinking about. Gina Rodriguez Davila, you're working on your throat chakra too. Find your voice. Like I said, the right people will find you that way. And a lot of times we have this fear about voicing our opinion. Maybe people won't align with it. They won't be into these things. Good. You know, <laughs> the wrong people will fall away that way I found and the right people will gravitate towards you. So find your voice. It's going to be really powerful in this. My message is not for everyone. It goes against everything that people have been 
program to believe is real, right? It goes against everything the government tells you to do, etc., etc. So this stuff isn't for everyone. I get that, but it's been really powerful in me speaking my truth in the right people finding me. Um, so for sure, find your voice, Sarah Jade. You're working on your third eye too. Insight, understanding, awakening, awareness, and self-evaluation. This stuff is coming to us slowly. Our physical body is being upgraded as fast as we can handle it. And, you know, we're getting kind of this conscious level of awareness as fast as we can handle it. This isn't done overnight. This is kind of a gradual process. We've actually been working our entire lives towards the same goal, right? The same spiritual ascension. So this is happening kind of as fast as we can handle it. Now, it's taking our body a second to catch up with the mind as well because we kind of have a lot kind of that we're processing, um, but be patient with the process. You're always right where you should be. It's Almigia. You're working on your crown chakra, inspiration, ideas, spark, conception, and impulse. You know, sometimes everyone can't, every, sometimes people have bad days. And that's why we need these light, cold, these light holders here to, you know, remind people that they have this spark within and that they are the light, right? So we have a lot of people that incarnated here for a specific mission of uplifting consciousness, carrying this light and kind of uplifting humanity. You for sure are a light worker. You're meant to be, like I said, making sparks of divine light in kind of dark places, right? You're meant to be uplifting the collective. Make sure that you're kind of setting the frequency and not absorbing the frequency of everyone around you. That's really helped me like that. When I wake up in the morning, I try to kind of find my own frequency before I go interact with people. Sarah Hilda Garvey's. You're working on your heart chakra. More passion, desire, fun, fulfillment, and joy. Have more fun. It's like the message of the week, right? We've had a really stressful kind of year, just in a lot of releasing. It's been hard on our physical body as well. We're basically having a lot filter out from the physical, whether it's toxins, you know, debris from our energy field, garbage on a soul level. We have a lot kind of being processed through the physical body. So it's really important that we're finding our light right now, having more fun. Rachel Woods. You're working on your base chakra, letting go of fear completely. That's what's blocking us from our infinite potential. That's why we have so much fear programming around us, whether it's, you know, things we're seeing all around us, the negative being pointed out, you know. I know that you can turn on the news and they'll tell you about a lot of negative things that are occurring around the planet, but there's also miracles happening, divine things unfolding, right? Just the most amazing things as well. So we for sure need to stay focused on the positive as well. It will bring us more positive. Focus on what you're grateful for. It will really unlock you with your manifesting. Jennifer Marie Hargrave. You're working on your throat chakra, creativity, imagination, expression, originality, and passion. Time to get creative. I figure the universe has kind of done almost every experience ever at this point, wouldn't you think? Right? Wouldn't you think? So it's time to get creative. Don't worry. Um, the universe has never experienced being you this life. Time to get creative with the things that you're doing with your life. I found that when I've kind of unplugged from that, you know, general construct of the American dream and what is expected of people and I get creative and try to have more fun with the things that I want to do and experience, they align a lot faster. Get creative. Diane Elizabeth Ianon Hart. You're working on your crown chakra and more faith, hope, support, miracles, and spirituality. I literally need like a miracle a month lately doing my mission and I'm not even being dramatic about it. So I have seen so many miracles just continuing forward with my mission that it would blow your mind. We are not here alone. We are creating with this universal force that I like to call consciousness, right? Some people call it God, um, you know, source, whatever. But I found it's more of an energy, less of a guy in the sky and more of an energy source that is all around us and within us that we can learn how to tap into, tune into, and even manipulate in our lives you know, to kind of direct it where it is needed. I always describe this energy as a very divine energy and with any type of healing, it always goes where it is needed to assist the person as well. So we know that this is a conscious, we, we like to think of it as an intelligent infinity and intelligent energy. This energy source that is guiding us 
Have trust in the universe. Expect miracles and you will see them. Scott Orr, you're working on your sacral. Pleasure, enjoyment, beauty, sensuality, and indulgence. As generators, it's important that we're lighting ourselves up. We can see a correlation between our frequency and the collective frequency as well. So for sure, it's really important that we're kind of putting our frequencies up through the roof right now because that will help dissipate any of the negativity occurring on this planet faster as well. Have more fun, right? Do more of what lights you up. And you're also helping the entire collective to raise its frequency. When we heal ourselves, we heal everyone connected to us as well. Mo Sass. You're working on your heart chakra, connection, universal oneness, love, interconnection, and support. Time for more love. Do more of what, love, what you love. Be around more people that you love, right? Basically, just start to be more love. That's how we attract love back to us as well. A lot of people are kind of coming up empty in their relationships because they're expecting to receive love without having mastered giving it or admitting love or becoming more love. So more love, more heart chakra work. April Denise Pryor, you're working on your sacral chakra. That is, you know, where our life force energy comes from. Keep working on your sacral. Gretchen Hyatt, you're working on your third eye. Nancy Roswell, you're working on your solar plexus. Self-esteem, confidence, self-love, self-worth, and pride. Um, keep working on more self-love. We have to really take care of ourselves to ever be in a union with anyone else. And like I said, these relationships are hard. More self-love. You're really energetically sensitive. Let's see. Neferti Atan, you're working on your third eye. Intuition, trust, insight, awareness, and guidance. Keep working on your third eye. We'll get more and more powerful with that energy center as well. Amy Twami, you're working on your third eye as well. Visualization, imagination, focus, experience, and manifestation. I was having a conversation about how most people would reach enlightenment through a lot of years of very hard work, discipline, maybe even going and living in like a Buddhist temple, right? And things like that. And we're doing it in a different way. We're doing it through, you know, the trauma that we had is leading us to that enlightenment. So it's taking more work in the healing that needs to occur before we kind of enter into that fully. So more healing. We're on this path of enlightenment. Des Gwanthar. <laughs> You're working on your solar plexus, responsibility, self-discipline, empowerment, reliability, and fulfillment. And this is meant to, you know, lead us to a place of empowerment. Let's see. April Palmer, you're working on your crown chakra, intelligence, education, knowledge, perception, and flexibility. Time to go back to school. We're living in a school. I like to think that this is like when you are going to like elementary school. I like to think of Earth like we're going to elementary school during the day. And when we go to sleep, we actually go home to, you know, the other dimensions that our soul resides in. So we're kind of in a school here. And you can tell with these live feeds and these missions that are popping up that we're being encouraged to go back to school. Um, we actually get a dopamine kick when we learn something new. Yeah, it's really good for us, right? You actually get a really positive chemical reaction. Um, be open to learning. A lot of you guys, if you're into this stuff, you guys know I teach classes on energy healing and I try to teach everyone that anyone can kind of tap into their potential as, you know, someone who's clairvoyant or a healer. I'm going to be getting off of here on that note. Um, I'm just going to put it out there again that I'm doing that 12-12 event. There is an event on this page. And next Saturday, I'll also be at Stonehenge. If you guys want to participate or get activated from these sacred sites, you do have to sign up through my site. If you need more information, you can always hit my business page inbox.